OpenAI launched ChatGPT Atlas, which is a browser they made with ChatGPT built right into the heart of it. Now, we've had early access to this browser for a while, and I've had some time to play around with it and find some pretty useful, but also some pretty fun use cases. So that's what this video is gonna be about. And if you wanna keep seeing more videos like this, hit that subscribe button so that you get notified whenever we put out a video. Now, before I go into the list of cool things you can do with this browser, let's start with some basics. So here's what the browser actually looks like. It's currently only for Mac OS, although they're already figuring out how to get it on Windows and other operating systems as well. But for now, it's Mac OS. So here you can see a normal chat GPT window. You can change the models like you can on the ChatGPT website. You can even load the sidebar over here. So, so far, whatever you see over here is pretty much like the normal ChatGPT, right? Even the plus button that has multiple modes. Let's try asking it a query. Top five places to eat burgers in Bangalore. All right, and in classic GPT style, you have a response being generated right in front of you over here. Right, so Burger Senor, I approve. Yeah, pretty much classic chat GPT. Now, if you don't want a classic chat GPT-like experience, and if you want the typical Google-like experience that actually shows you links, you can click on this button, and you have it directly out of Google. By the way, this is powered by Google, which is why you can actually see the Google button right over here. So you can go into Google and see your normal responses as well. And just like Google has multiple tabs like images, news, and videos, you can pretty much do the same over here. And all of this, again, is powered by Google. So everything other than the home button is pretty much powered by Google, which is kind of interesting to see because it shows that they didn't ditch the entire uh, search experience and they kind of built on top of what was already built. Alternatively, you can also type in a website over here. So I'm just going to go to the 100x website. And... One thing to note is here you will see another button called Ask ChatGPT, which opens up a right sidebar where you can ask it to summarize, you can ask it questions about the website, etc., etc. All right, so that's pretty much the basics. Uh, ChatGPT Atlas is available worldwide for anyone on any of the ChatGPT tiers, right from free to pro. But uh, the only catch is it's only available on Mac OS. They're working on the Windows and the other operating system versions, but currently it's only on the Mac OS. However, there is a feature called Agent Mode, which is only available for plus users and upwards. All right, that being said, let's actually begin. Number one, research and tasks using agent mode. Okay, I'm gonna write a prompt, I'll explain it later, but just watch me. And before doing this, I'm just gonna select agent mode. Research on the top 10 AI news and interesting things that happened in the domain of AI in the past two weeks. Create a 50 word summary of each of the items and put them in a Google Doc. Now share the Google Doc link to Sridev from my team. And finally, I'll hit enter. Okay, so here I've pretty much given it three distinct tasks. Number one is researching on the top 10 news that happened in the domain. Number two is opening Google Docs and creating a 50 word summary. And number three is sending me an email. Now I'm hands off over here and this is all Atlas doing the work for me. All right, so now it's opened up a window, okay? So what it's essentially doing is it's going through the entire internet in order to figure out what are the stories that happened in this space in the last two weeks. So you can already see a list of articles that it is actually scanning through right here. And it's doing this by itself. Okay, so it automatically opened Google Docs right here. I'm hands off, right? This is basically Atlas controlling my tab. It is by itself opening Google Docs. It is by itself populating whatever it wants on Google Docs and giving me the summary that I asked for. You guys should actually try it. It's, it's, it's a completely different feeling when you watch this happen right in front of you. It's pretty cool. All right, so the summary is right here. Now it's clicked the share button and I think it's trying to find my email from here. All right, it's actually hit send. Let's see if I got it. Ah, there it is. So now I've pretty much gotten the email right here. Isn't that insane? The fact that I just typed this one prompt and it did all of this for me, it went to the tools, it pretty much took control of my browser and did the work for me. By the way, if you noticed, while the entire process was going on, there was a button in the bottom where if you wanted to stop the process and take control, you could actually just press that button and take control as well. This is a safety feature, by the way. 
and this entire process was done in a total of five minutes, right? So I could I could have pretty much just kept this process on the run and done something else and then come back to this later on as well. And that's the whole point of having a capability like this. Moving on, shopping on agent mode. Okay. Here's how I'm gonna demonstrate this for you. I'm a big fan of burrito bowls, right? And I wanna make a burrito bowl at my home, right? So the first thing I'm, that I'm gonna do is to ask ChatGPT to give me a recipe for a burrito bowl. So I'll type, give me a recipe for a burrito bowl. All right, so it's given me a list of ingredients and it's already given me the process as well. Now I'm gonna turn on agent mode and I'm gonna say, can you order these items on Amazon for me. And let's see what happens. Okay, so it's literally going on the search bar, it's looking for the ingredients and it's just gonna add to my cart and then it's gonna move on to the next item. Okay, so here it was actually looking for corn kernels and a lot of the products that were shown were just popcorn kernels. So it kind of realized that it's looking for the wrong product and then it figured out that it needs to change the name slightly so that it can look for the right product. Pretty impressive. Okay, so it's pretty much done and it has actually stopped at the checkout page, which means it didn't really proceed to the payment page. This is pretty much a basic built-in safety feature where when it comes to sensitive information like sending an email to someone or making a payment, they actually require you to intervene and sort of finish the process yourself, right? So it's, it pretty much does the research and the boring tasks like finding the products and adding it to cart. So you can see quite a lot of these products have been added to our cart, which is required for making our burrito bowl. So pretty cool. Now, I obviously would not use this in an everyday situation because I have my Blinkets and my Zeptos and my Instamart, which is like way faster than actually using something like this. But if you're someone who's lazy and if you want to sort of just keep something running in the background while you're doing other work, you can pretty much use a feature like this. But I don't really see a real life use case for actually automating the entire shopping process. However, there's a better way in order to use a feature like this, which brings me to the third topic on today's list, product comparison. So here I am trying to buy earbuds, right? I lost my earphones and I'm just trying to buy a new pair of earphones. And I have three pairs of earphones that I'm actually confused between. Now I love JBL the brand and I'm pretty particular that I want this brand. And uh, after whatever research I've done, I found out that these three are the earphones that I'd like to buy, either one of these three, right? So here I'm gonna click on this button that says Ask ChatGPT and I'm gonna write the following prompt. Starting from this tab, see the next two tabs and create a product comparison table for me to figure out which one of these earphones are the best. All right, I'm gonna click enter and let's see what happens. Okay, so let's actually open this in a new tab. So it's rightly identified the three tabs. The first one is Tune Buds, the second one is Wipe Beam, and the third one is Tune Flex. And now it's created a pretty interesting uh, product comparison page for me. Whenever I decide which one I like, I can simply go to Asian mode and ask it to add to cart and buy this product for me. Number four, browser memories. Now, this is a completely new way of exploring your browser. See, we all have browser histories, right? And sometimes we might have stumbled upon an article or a video that we once saw, and we kind of remember what it was about, but we just happened to forget it over a period of time. And if I wanted to look for that video, I would just go to my browser history, I would scroll, and I would scroll endlessly until I find that particular video or article. But this feature on ChatGPT Atlas essentially makes it possible for you to just type in a prompt and find something like that, right? So I remember browsing for a video a few days ago that was uploaded by this YouTube channel, which talks about how AI image and video models work. I don't remember which channel actually posted it, but I kind of want to find out. So let's actually type in. So I'm going to type, I recently watched a video on how AI images and videos work. Can you pull up the link for that, please? So Atlas basically has access to your uh, browser history and it automatically imports your browser history from your previous browser, be it Chrome or Safari, right? So you don't have to create fresh browsing history on Atlas. It pretty much imports it from these existing browsers. And it goes through that browser, browser history in order to find out the relevant information for you, which is really cool.
All right, this is pretty much the video that I was looking for. So it's pretty much a completely new way of going through your search history and finding that lost article or that lost website that you don't remember anymore. Number five, summarize this. Okay, this is a pretty basic expected feature. If your AI browser is not doing this, it's not a good AI browser. So let me just show you how this works. So I'm just gonna type latest AI research papers. Right, so now ChatGPT is gonna give me a list of uh, the top research papers that are trending currently. All right, let's actually click uh, on this agentic AI research paper, right? And let's look at the PDF over here. Now I can use this in order to ask it to summarize it for me. So summarize this paper for me like you would for a 10 year old in 100 words or less. And there you have it. I have a nice and clean summary right here. Now, alternatively, you can also go to any website. So let's just look for AI news and go to the news tab. So here we have a bunch of AI news and I'm gonna click on this one, which talks about AI in South Korea and South Korea's economic blueprint for AI. So now I can just say, summarize this for me in 50 words, and it will pretty much give me a summary that looks like this. Next up, email and text editing. So if I have any kind of Word document or an email or something like that, and I want to modify it, I want to spell check it, I want to grammar check it, or if I want to change the tonality, etc., I can simply go to that document. So this is basically an Instagram Reel script. I can select the item. And here, when I hover around, I see a ChatGPT logo, and I can be like, make this script sound more conversational, right? And there you have it. You have a much more conversational sounding script right here. And if I like this, I can just click on update and it will pretty much update it into the new version. So this is like your grammar slash spelling slash tonality slash uh, make the sound more professional bot that follows you everywhere, wherever there is text involved. And it's amazing how it works directly in tools like Google Docs that you use almost on an everyday basis in your workspace. Next up, personality assessment. This, by the way, is one of the more fun use cases. It does not have any real world implications or anything, but I, I think I just had fun using this. So I'm just gonna type a prompt like, based on my browser history in the past six months, what can you tell me about my personality? Tell me both pros and cons. Now, if you're someone who spends quite a lot of time online, a lot of your browsing history pretty much determines what you look for online and the kind of stuff that you view online, right? So I think this is a pretty useful question so that ChatGPT can give you an assessment of what your online persona is. All right, so we have an answer. Uh, again, no real use case, but I think it's just fun to read through. So let's see what it says about me. By the way, this is a common account that my entire team uses, so I'm 100% sure that whatever ChatGPT says, it's gonna say that I'm an AI enthusiast and I, I use a lot of AI tools. Pretty much because like 20, 30 people in my team uses this account to get access to a lot of tools, right? We have one common account for all our tools. So yeah, obviously it says I'm a tech and AI enthusiast, entrepreneurial and knowledge-driven, resourceful. Cons is heavy focus on digital tools. I mean, obviously that's what we're doing here. Potential information overload. Of course, that happens when 20 people are using the same account. Frequent brand specific exploration. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, we're here to, uh, everyone over here is a part of 100X, right? So uh, since everyone cares about that, a lot of people look for things related to 100X. Pretty cool. But if you do it using your personal account, it will be much more personalized and you can sort of use this as a, as a chance to know the digital version of yourself a little more and maybe ask ChatGPT for some feedback or some uh, obvious uh, flaws that it sees uh, in uh, what you do online. And finally, we have the pull request review. 
So if you have a GitHub pull request that you kind of want to merge, um, you can pretty much ask ChatGPT using the sidebar on whether this is a low risk merge or whether this is a high risk merge, whether everything looks good over here. And instead of me showing this to you, I, I'd love to sort of bring up the OpenAI demo that was sort of shown live on the live stream uh, because who better to show you an OpenAI uh, feature than the team itself. So here we have a code that is kind of being merged into production and uh, ChatGPT is essentially trying to figure out whether this is a low risk change or a high risk change and it pretty much just said that uh, the changes are uh, mostly like visual changes so it flagged it as a low risk change and it can pretty much be uh, sent, uh, it, it can pretty much be uh, merged with the code base. All right, so that's eight things you can do with ChatGPT Atlas. My personal favorite is using agent mode in order to do some cool things. I absolutely love the way it takes control of my entire computer and does some pretty cool things with it, uh, like research, like figuring out my shopping cart, etc. And uh, I also think one of the more interesting use cases of using agent mode can be to find interesting people on LinkedIn, be it for finding leads, be it for finding people you want to hire be it for uh, finding someone you might want to stay connected to. So you could prompt something like, hey, I am looking for uh, a designer who has two plus years of experience, blah, blah, blah. Or if you are a freelancer looking for a client, you could say something like, hey, I am looking for, let's say, the growth or the marketing specialist at a series A company that does not have a video editor or a designer at their company. And then you can sort of go really narrow on this. Uh, you can find these kind of profiles. You can ask Asian Mode to list these kind of profiles and you can also ask it to send personalized messages to these kind of people so that uh, the chances of converting is actually higher. Although I would still recommend you craft these messages because it just looks AI if you make ChatGPT do it. That being said, go check out ChatGPT Atlas yourself and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time.